Hello. Uh, this is my first haul of 2022. I guess you could call it the spring haul because uh, I don't think these are going to be on a monthly basis to just as and when. Um, we've got a decent stack. Uh, some pretty rare finds. Uh, some are gifts. Some are just lucky bargains that I found here and there. So uh, let's just make a start. Um, something randomly I picked up was... Uh, Cezanne and Comet Girl by uh, Yuriko Akase. Uh, I watched a documentary uh, with this artist um, on, uh, I forget the name of the channel, but it was really, really interesting. Uh, and what sort of sold me on it was um, the full colour. Everything's in beautiful watercolour. Uh, none of it's digital at all. It's all, it's all hand coloured. Um, so, and I keep seeing this and uh, I keep, seen meet the weeb family um talking about this and they have like a little in joke um where you're supposed to guess where it is on the shelf um so i thought you know what let me just pick up myself and see what it's like um, and i don't have enough 70s um, manga in my collection uh another thing i'm slowly collecting um as and when i can find volumes for a reasonable price this is something that's been out of print for about 20 years and that's not an exaggeration uh, and that's uh Volume four of Kazan, um, an old sort of comics, comic one, comics one manga. So I've got the first four volumes out of a total of, I believe, six or seven. Uh, just a classic sort of shonen uh, series. Uh, I don't, have, I don't know if it's any good. Um, just the artwork sort of intrigued me and the the character designs. Uh, so yeah. Um. Next is something uh, I'm trying to pick up again. Um, it's out of print, um, and I can only come across volumes as and when I come up, when when I find them for a decent price. Uh, and that's a uh, old boy. So I've got volume three, um, volume six, and volume seven. So I've got the first seven volumes now. I only need the last volume, volume eight. Uh, which is unfortunately quite expensive. Um, but I came across these all for either retail price or under, so I'm happy with that. Um, I'm I'm going to hold out uh, on um, buying volume eight, the last one, um, as I hope I'll be able to come across that for a decent price as well uh, at some point. If not, then, you know, tough. Uh, uh, something that just recently came in the post... Um, so this is another series that I've collected um, and now completed. I read the first volume uh, last year and I really, really enjoyed it. And I had it in my mind to uh, pick up the rest of the volumes. And um, a friend of mine uh, and watcher, McPuffin, um, came across a good deal on, on eBay and alerted me to this. So I ended up picking up uh, Doll, um, an old Tokyo Pop series. This is uh, by Mitsukazu Mihara. Uh, it's volume two. Volume three, which I picked up separately. Uh, volume four. Uh, volume five. And let's get back to this one. Volume six. So I now have all six volumes of Doll. The vo first volume I have in uh, in hardcover. Um, it's one that I bought about six or seven years ago and just neglected to uh, read or complete. Uh, but this is a really cool uh, sci-fi Jose series um, about uh, beautiful androids um, and how they're sort of integrated with society and do different sort of tasks, whether that um, or just perform different jobs. Uh, you know, whether it's like butlers or um, you know, sex dolls. You know, it's it's quite a mature series, but um, really, really good. At, at least I really enjoyed the first volume. Uh, so I'm looking forward to reading the rest of it now that I have all of it. I'm going to be reading this next. Um, next is a short story collection from Natsume Ono, and that's uh, Tesoro. Uh, yeah, I don't really know much about it, um, but it's part of the uh, SIG, Biz Signature Icky line, um, and I always enjoy um, things in, in, in that imprint. Um, and the artwork's really nice. It's got this, this sort of like brown, sort of sepia ink tone to it um pretty nice color pages in the start there 
but yeah, it just it's just quirky and weird. Um, and uh, that's what attracted me to it. And I like I like different things. Uh, okay, second stack. Um, this is a volume I've been waiting on for <laughs> many years, uh, as as many other people have, and that's Yotsuba volume fifteen. This is a really thick volume. I think it's about two hundred and forty pages in this. Uh, I absolutely love Yotsuba. Um, I always enjoy these little stories. It's always just really sort of wholesome and sweet. Um, and I'm looking forward to reading it. Um, I, I may just read all of Yotsuba uh, again. It's been many years since I've read it. Um, okay, these next two volumes uh, were a gift from uh, uh, McPuffin. Muffin. Um, in fact, no, no, they weren't. I bought these. Uh, volume 3, which I already have, was a gift. So... Yeah, I'm getting mixed up. Anyway, it's uh, volume one and volume two of Osama Tezuka's Blackjack, uh, the hardcovers. So I now have all three of the hardcovers that were released. Um, and they're beautiful. Uh, I got this I got this for a really good deal on eBay. Um, £30 for both of them. Um, and couple, you know, coupling that with the free volume... Um, that uh, was gifted to me, the third volume. You, you might say I got all of these pretty much for retail price. Um, so really happy with that. And uh, really happy to own these. I mean, I don't think I'll own, I don't think I'll ever own all of Blackjack, given that it's nigh on impossible to come across the entire, I think, 17 volumes. Um, but not all of them were released in hardcover. I believe it was only the first three. So I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied with these. Okay. Um... I got some uh, new Viz hardcovers. Um, I wasn't planning on collecting these until more of the volumes come out, but um, I was in uh, where was I? I was in Newcastle um, recently, and uh, I just thought, you know what, I was nipping to Fib uh, Forbidden Planet up there, and this was really the only thing on the shelf that uh, you know that I really wanted, uh, and that's uh, Fist of the North Star. It's got the first two volumes. Um, yeah, uh, this is a series I've always wanted to read. It's one of those sort of um, legacy sort of uh, series that um, you know was really popular in the nineties. Uh, you know, through uh, through the TV series and in, in, in the film. Um, so it's something that I've always always wanted to check out. Um, and now the manga's finally coming out. So, I mean, it looks very it looks very similar to to Hirohiko Araki. Um, and I guess it's, just, it's from the exact same era of, of Jump manga, though, but I think they're both um, serialised in Jump uh, roughly around the same time. That is Fist of the North Star and uh, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. Um, so lots of similarities in the artwork. Um, and I'm not too I'm not too keen on the artwork um, of uh, Araki. So I don't think I'll be... I mean, I, this is obviously a different artist, but... Uh, it looks a little bit better. I think. I feel. I think. I feel like the characters are a little bit more on model, albeit the artwork is very, very similar, not very distinct. Uh, so I'm, I, I'm hoping I do enjoy it, considering um, how long it is. I've been wanting to read this. Uh, okay, this is a new release, um, or a relatively new release. Uh, Robo Sapiens: Tales of Tomorrow, by uh, uh, Toranosuke Shimada. Uh, a really nice different 70s release. I mean, I don't have a lot of 70s manga in my collection and uh, this is just something that really picked my interest um, just on account of the artwork. It's really sort of uh, um, alternative sort of style uh, and just the themes that it deals with as well. Uh, it's about like um, uh, humanity's decline and the rise of artificial intelligence, which are sort of science fiction concepts that I, uh, that I find really, really interesting. And I want to read stories that sort of, you know, stand in, you know, sit in this vein. Um, so, yeah, I am looking forward to reading this at some point. Um, and on to some of the uh, Gekia. So, you know, I've only got two manga this month, or not this month, this this past couple of months. Um, two manga that I guess you could consider Gekia. Uh, and that is uh, Iceland and World Map Room by Yuichi Yokoyama. Um, I mean, this is very, uh, a word I often use, quintessential um, 
uh, I think essentially Gekka is more contemporary art, um, abstract art than uh, than sequential storytelling, even though it is, you know, very sequential. I mean, I've only read Garden by this artist, and I believe this is actually a uh, either a prequel or a sequel to, to Garden. One, one of them is related to Garden. I believe it might be this one, but it's just sort of geometric shapes and weird people sort of going through vast landscapes. And yeah, I, I just find it really, really appealing. Uh, I never thought I'd sort of like this sort of style, but um, when I read Garden, I was I was pleasantly surprised with uh, with how just just the simplicity of it um, is 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 where I've found my enjoyment. Um, there's no sort of central narrative or there's no real story at all. It's just um, characters going through a weird geometric world and commenting on what they see. Um, you don't really. There's nothing. There's no meaning to it. Really, I mean, yeah, I guess you could sort of, you know, extrapolate some meaning from it if if you really tried, um, or or if you were you know so inclined and you wanted to sort of critique it to that level. But on the surface, it's it's just it's just interesting pictures, um, with a uh, interesting artwork, and this one has has a nice uh, cover. I mean, this one's from Picture Box, so it's uh, the same sort of print quality as Garden and uh, New Engineering. And I believe Travel also is, uh, was was released by Picture Box, but they're long out of print. Um, this one is uh, not as good quality. Um, it's a uh, one from Breakdown Press. Uh, the page quality is a lot um, a lot cheaper, but I'm glad to own them. Um, I'm glad to own more Yuichi Yokoyama in my collection. Okay, uh, three more things to show you. Um, this this is something I bought simply just to complete the collection. Uh, and I really didn't enjoy it. Um, and that's Ghost in the Shell 2 Man Machine Interface uh, by Shiro Masamune, uh, just you know, part of the Ghost in the Shell uh, trilogy. Um, and this, by far, out of the three, was uh, was the worst. It was it was just bad. It was just really really bad. Um, even the even the the artwork in it. Oops. Um, a, a lot of the artwork is in full color, but it's not really that good. Um, I mean, it's just, it's so messy and, you know, what's going on? It's just, yeah, I, I didn't enjoy it. I can't recommend it. Uh, next, continuing with the uh, deluxe editions. Um, this is uh, volume four of Blade of the Immortal. Um, roughly halfway there now, so there's going to be 10 of these. Um, volume five, I believe, is just due to release here in the UK. Um, so I'm looking forward to completing this at one point because I really, really want to reread this. Um, and finally, uh, this is something that I've been aware of this for years, um, but I just assumed it was out of print or long. I mean, it is out of print, but I assumed it would have been hard to come by. Um, and it's not really something that I've ever really been interested in. Um, and it's not really, it, it's, it's not really a manga, but it is written by Katsuhiro Otomo, the same guy who did, um, Akira. And no, it's not Domu, um, it's Hikura. Uh, written by Katsuhiro Toma, but it's illustrated by uh, Shinji Kimura. I've seen adverts for this um, in, in other manga, I'm sure, because this little character here really just looks familiar. So, I mean, it's an older Dark Horse release, and it's more of just a picture book than anything. Um, it's not an art book. Um, it does have sort of a, a story, but it's it's more of a, like a Western-style sort of children's book. Um, but with like a really interesting sort of Tim Burton-esque gothic style, uh, which I really, really, really like. I mean, look how cool it looks. Um, so yeah, it's supposed to be just like a little whimsical story about, you know, a little vampire. Uh, and I'm all for that sort of stuff. Like, you know, I, I do prefer sort of my mature series and stuff, but, you know, every once in a while I like just to, to just read something really simple and, you know, childish. <laughs> so anyway, um, that's everything that I've bought. Really for the past couple of months. Um, I don't know when my next haul video will be, but I am going to try and at least record a uh, um, monthly uh, wrap-up video for what I've read in January and February. Um, so yeah, catch you then.